<laughs> having to, we're having some issues with the audio apparently. Okay, that's good. Hopefully we can fix this in, in editing. editing. <laughs> I, that better be somewhere. <laughs> All right. Welcome everyone to another exciting edition of the Marvel of Horror, where we discuss all things past, present, future, as they pertain to the horror genre. I'm your host, your friend, fellow horror enthusiast Bruce Marvel, and today is very special. My longtime friend, best friend, known her for almost 30 years, uh, a bond created by horror. It was Arl Stein books back then, so that was the European <laughs> books. But uh, best friend, lover to death, kind of more like a sister at this point. Sister I never had, but desperately needed in my life. Nicole DiBiasso. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Jerry, hello. Jerry, hello. <laughs> you look rested. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me on. This is super exciting. You're always welcome on. And sorry it took so long to get you on. This is very awesome. This is very exciting. Yeah. And right off the bat, so I probably heard the story many times, but tell me, tell people, what was like your first real experience with the horror genre? <sighs> Let's say. Um, obviously, we've discussed much over the years. Um, I watched a lot of inappropriate movies and shows when I was a kid. Um, True child of the 80s. Yes, absolutely. Um, very close to my grandparents, so I was with them a lot when I was a kid. And, um, saw a lot of, like, you know, I wasn't watching, like, Fraggle Rock that much. We were watching, like, HBO, Homebox <laughs> Office. I was watching all the things. And, um, some of my, <laughs> my earliest memories, um... One of them you know very well. I saw Children of the Corn. I was probably five or six years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> he wants you too, Malachi. <sighs> Scarred me for life. Um, to this day, I feel uneasy around the cornfields, as you know. Every time I drive by <laughs> cornfields, I just think of you. Like, I just think of that story. I oh, remember, yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember hearing a story. I forgot, it. like, what, yeah, five. Oh, my God. I was pretty young. And I mean, like, there's no, like, you know, nowadays, like, with my son, Valentino, we were like used to watch stuff like you'd have like horror movies shows in the background and you know when they're like babies you kind of think about it but now he's getting old older like i'm super mindful of it i'm like oh he can't really watch this yeah. there was none of that when i was a kid so same um children of the corn i remember watching like the nightmare on elm street movies mm -hmm. friday 13th and another one another big one which also has scarred me to this day stephen king's it the miniseries yes. Whew. Nightmare Fuel. Stephen King's It, I, the 1990s version of the TV miniseries, I'll never forget it. I think the first time, so I think I saw part two before I saw part one. Yeah. And yeah, I remember seeing it and like I was in my mom's room and my mom's one side of her bedroom was like just a mirror. It was a giant mirror. Oh man. And I hate mirrors. Yeah. Fucking hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they're weird. I don't like it, but uh, it's from that Poltergeist movie. <sighs> what was that the third Poltergeist? Yeah, the oh, yeah. Wall? And the building, and the, yeah, that's actually a, that's, it's not the best one, but it's still kind of creepy. It's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, like it's not the best, but it's, it's, not it's the okay. Best, it's okay. Yeah. It's worth the watch. Yeah. But uh, I remember seeing that and just like being on my mom's bed and it was over like I couldn't move I was too afraid to move I was like I don't know what I'm gonna do now yeah <laughs> like, I was literally like paralyzed to fear scared to death of that movie I feel like one of the things that really like fucked me up from that movie hopefully we can fix this in editing yeah. with my cursing um <laughs> what's gonna happen so uh <laughs> the scene where he comes out from under the bed and he's like belch and he's just oh, like yeah he's like you know talking to like henry bowers and he, that like messed me up and then the scene obviously in the beginning with the little girl where you like you see him through the yes the clothes and then you see like the scary face just it, it was just like terrifying like even like i mean for many years when you're like laying in bed like what's what's in the dark what could possibly be the worst thing it's it's pennywise the clown the it's, worst thing it's pennywise the clown like well, Tim Curry. Tim, Tim Curry. Tim Let's Curry. not even talk about this remake, which was trash. Everyone's like, this was such a great movie. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> this movie's trash. Like, how did you beat him? By bullying him? What's, so What's happening here? The new, okay, the new It movie, because that comes up a lot, right? <laughs> so, the first movie, like, the first part, I liked, even though there's there's so many things in it that they just, I'm like, why did you do that? Like, the, I hated the stand. The stand ghost, I was like, okay, this is clearly, like, 
Here's the monster we wanted to use for Mama, but decided not to go with. Yeah. So we'll just put it in this movie. The first, I will say, I will agree <laughs> that the first movie wasn't terrible. It, wasn't it was terrible. okay. And I get that they had to break away from, like, because of time, like, they updated it. So it wasn't yeah. like the 1950s, um, you know, Universal Monsters, which I think they, I'm not sure if I read this right, they had, like, a little bit of a hard time trying to get the rights to those. Probably, and I think what they were going to do, so for part two, there was a, um, they wanted to do, like, uh, they basically wanted to take, like, the teen werewolf scene, but use Freddy Krueger instead, because it was the 80s. Yeah. I think, like, they just couldn't get the, I guess they just couldn't get the permission to yeah. get it to fly, well, which would have been awesome that. if they could. Well, I mean, I'm not even mad at the fact that they updated it to the 80s. No. Because, like, was that so was cool. kind of cool, like, the, like, the little new kids on the block tape, like, like things like that. That was cute. Like, and the, I think, like, don't get me wrong, I feel like, the acting was great. Like, the kids yeah. did an amazing job. Like, there were some parts that were good. I, I mean, I even, even though he's not my Pennywise, like, Bill Skarsgård, he did a decent he job as, good. He was as Pennywise. Yeah, like, he was he'll creepy never be enough. Tim Curry, but God, that's, no one will ever be no Tim Curry. No one will ever be Tim Curry. Ever. But basically, yeah. it was just like, okay. Um, I just felt, like, so let down because, like, it is my favorite book. I have mm. read it, like, four times in my life. And it's yeah. a big book. Um, yeah. And the story, I like know pretty much in and out. I just felt like they had the the budget, they had like the the big like you know the R rating. They they had the tools, they had the talent. They just <laughs> didn't deliver. Like it just fell flat, and yeah. it's disappointing. But anyway, to make a long story even longer, Stephen King's it. That's like my one of my big childhood memories of horror. Okay. So yes. And that's like I said. That's I mean. Up the bat, swinging a home run to me yeah. because that's still a creepy fucking movie. I read something today because I was kind of looking over that movie, and one of the trivia things was like, uh, because I want to see that documentary they did with like Tim Curry. Yeah, I want to watch that definitely. Eventually. But I guess Tim Curry was so good and so scary in character that a lot of the cast members like wouldn't talk to him. Yeah, like, through scenes like that's just how creepy the fucking guy. These are these are adults. I'm a forty year old <laughs> woman, and then like when I think about like. You know, seeing him, like, I'm like, it's still scary to me. Yeah. Like, I think it's, like, still very, very creepy. Like, it holds up. The writer's wife, who is actually, who's uh, the girl from the original Black Christmas. Oh, yeah, that is her. That is her. Mm -hmm. I can't think of her name, though, in the movie. But anyway, Audra. Audra, yes. Mm -hmm. Audra pulls up to that gas station and talking to that guy, and then his voice starts to change. Yeah. That shit scared me the most in that movie. There, like, I mean, there's so many like little scenes yeah. where you're like this, like this is the most terrifying. This is the most terrifying. Remember, like the book, yeah. it's like the picture starts moving, and you know what? A lot of people actually shit on the miniseries. Like, oh, wasn't that great? I'm like, if you're gonna compare the miniseries to these remade movies, you're out of your mind because yeah. they're so close. They're much closer to the source material, which mm. obviously. That's what we would love to see more like, you know, these stories are great. We love them for a reason. Why don't you stick closer to the source material? That's what we're here for. But it's also 1990. Uh, what was it? NBC made for TV. It was actually, that was super fucking impressive. Yeah. For that time. Yeah. Like the, like all the special effects and like what they were able to get away with yeah. on TV. Like, I mean, it, they didn't have to like, didn't have to be super gruesome. They didn't have to do any of that stuff. Like, and it was still like, Effectively terrifying. John Ritter was a big name yeah. back then. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. John Ritter, you may know him from such films as Stay Tuned. <sighs> that's the best. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was going to tie that in. Yeah, so yeah, that's the best. that movie. Salt and Peppa was in it. I was like, this movie's great. <laughs> Classic. Just Another movie I watched as a child. Whatever. Oh, man, I still love that movie. Yeah. And I do. Yeah, I remember going to see that with my mom and my aunt. They love that movie. Yeah, it was good. He was dressed Hold as up. Prince. I'm sorry. The, the, he was dressed as the artist formerly known as Prince. Whatever man. your name is. Whatever. Sure. The symbol guy. You know, yeah, the yeah. guy who did the soundtrack for the Tim Burton Batman. You know who he is. Yeah. R.I.P. to Prince as well. R.I.P. to Prince. Yeah. 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 He's a very underrated guitar player. Absolutely. So, Creep Show. You are big into the anthologies. I you am. Are, yes, you are the... Anytime I think of you, I think of anthologies right off the bat. Yes. Twilight Zone, Tales from the Dark Side. Yes, these are my things. Yes. Um, also, I want to acknowledge that I am that I am that nerd, like wearing the band's T-shirt to the concert that you're going to. I couldn't 
possibly not come here and not wear this badass creep show it, shirt it is a, it to is, discuss creep show. It's a pretty impressive t-shirt. Listen, I'll die on this hill. I don't care. <laughs> this one time, I'll wear the I'll wear the shirt to what I'm no, going to yeah. discuss. Why not? It's it's pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, thank you. You know what I mean? Um, I kind of wish I had one. Listen, somebody's birthday's coming up. Jesus, maybe you'll okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my birthday's in April. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love I love anthology horror. Like, I always have. There's just something about these, like, small, like, bites of horror. Like, these, like, short bursts. Like, you don't mm-hmm. have to, like, wait long to get the big payout. Um, and I always have. Like, The Twilight Zone, as you know, my yeah. most favorite show of all time. Like, way ahead of its time. The black and white's, like, amazing. Um and we watch them every year. Like, yes, we do. Does it matter if you have, like, a streaming service? I own them all on DVD. Something about that Twilight Zone marathon that comes on, like, sci-fi, it's just amazing. Like, I've seen all these episodes a million times. I know what's going to happen, but it's just, like, the excitement of what's next? What's they, it going to be? But they never get old. They never get old. Like, they I can literally watch them over and over again, and I just feel like they're so great. And obviously, a lot of them were written by Rod Serling, who is... A genius, like super genius. Yeah, yeah like the Don't best. Get enough credit, really. No, not at all. Um, just very smart and like you know, very um, like I said, ahead of his time. And Richard Matheson, who I also love. Yeah. Um, his short story books are amazing. Um, Stir of Echoes, like a lot of the things. I think he's somebody that doesn't get enough credit. He definitely is, and like um, I mean, Stephen King. Who yeah. We'll get into, or yeah. we have gotten into. Basically, calls um, like Hell House, like the greatest haunted house movie ever or haunted house like story ever done yeah and i think he's got an argument there i love like i love that like you just have like a short like story you don't have to get into like everyone's backstory or what happened and and it like i said the payout is quick it delivers mm-hmm. twilight zone i love that i love um night gallery which night was gallery. rod Serling's show after the twilight zone that a lot of people I feel like they don't give it enough play. They like, really don't. You don't get like the you don't get it in syndication that often, and you don't really like. I feel like a lot of people don't know that much about it. They do, and it's a shame because like Night Gallery, you know, I was one. Th- I think your birthday was back, and I was going to get them for you, but I was like, I don't know, she's because she's like got copies of them. They had like these nice Blu-ray like re-releases of them. I got them. You got them. I got them. I mean, like that's the only way you can watch them is like yeah. you know DVD, but they're good. Um, and you know. I love like I love Tales from the Dark Side, um, Tales from the Crypt, Tales another from show. The Crypt. I have all those on DVD. Like that's the best, and those are ones that like they have like so many big names. And I remember when that came on, like on HBO. Like when I was a kid, once again, probably shouldn't have been watching this, but yeah, whatever. They were so good, and they hold up. They do hold up, and like I said, most, just most of them do. Not that weird last season where it was like all filmed in like the UK, and like I'm like, wait, wait a minute, like what's going on here? Like, there's something, something's different, but I mean, they're still decent. They are. They, they were a lot of fun. I thought so too. And they still are. They're just a lot of fun. Like that's one thing. I, I mean, if they brought it back, they'd probably just screw it up. Oh yeah, that's something like they bring it back and you get you know hype for it, and then it would kind of be trash. Mm. Um, like Jordan Peele's Twilight Zone. I wanted to love it. I don't love it. I I like some of it, and I like. You know, how they do, like, a nod to the classics. Yeah. You know, and how he does the narrator, kind of like Rod Serling. Like, it, it's okay. Like, it's good. It's decent. But it's not, like, great. Um, also, like, the Twilight Zone, when they tried to bring it back, like, in the 80s. I and mean, yeah. Like, some of those are, like, okay. And then, again, little-known fact in what, then, like, was it the 2000s with Forrest Whitaker as the narrator? Those are awful. You can watch them on Tubi. I've never even I've never even seen or heard of those. Oh man, they're they're available to stream on Tubi. It's um, the new Twilight Zone. Forrest Whitaker is the narrator. It's got like Jessica Simpson, uh, Catherine Heigl. Like there's so many like stars from that time. Ushers in it. Uh, <laughs> who else? Just like a bunch of people. <laughs> And, like, different actors, Lou Diamond Phillips, like, they brought a bunch of people, like, as guest stars on it, mm-hmm. but the stories were just kind of like, eh, still fun, once again, even if it's bad anthology horror, I'll watch it, as you all know. I may have to, well, we'll get into Creepshow 3. Oh. <laughs> Don't waste your time with Creepshow 3. I'm warning you off the bat. I can't wait to, we're going to get into that, because <laughs> I was going to watch it, and then you're like, please <laughs> you didn't. You, don't, you didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. Damn. You got you. You and Andy you'll never, intercepted me. You'll never get that time back. That's what I mean. And, and we're getting older. Time is your currency. Yeah, that's <laughs> can't that's waste true. It. True. 
How old were you when you first saw Creepshow? See, I the like. Original Creepshow. I don't remember obviously like what age, but I saw it when I was younger. So the first Creepshow came out in 1982, the best year, and <laughs> it's you know so obviously I didn't watch it great when it came out, um, but. I saw it when I was a kid. I remember seeing it. Um, and obviously, Creepshow 2, which is also good. Yeah. So, those were on so much, I feel like, when we were kids. Like, on um, Home Box Office. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, you know, they were on all the time. So, in my mind, sometimes they would mix up. Like, which one was Creepshow 1 and which one was Creepshow 2. But obviously, I've seen them both, like, a million times. Yeah. So, so. Creepshow 2, I actually saw first. And I have a really funny story about Creepshow 2. We'll get into <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, I, can't Creep, wait. I remember seeing Creep Show Two like first. It actually took me a long time before I saw Creep Show One. Okay. But yeah, Creep Show Two, so we had a black box. Oh Yeah, we had a black box and like I think Creep Show Two is nineteen eighty seven, right? I wanted to say it was eighty eight, but I think it's eighty seven. But by then we had like the, the pay per view channels were forty eight and forty nine here in Delaware cable. So this was like always on. This and like uh Clint Eastwood and Deadpool and <laughs> some other some John Claude Van Damme movies stuff I wasn't supposed to be watching sure. I was clearly watching That's illegally what, this is a, yes I feel like this is what uh, one of our our big bonds was that we were both kids that grew up like oh, yeah. in the city and we kind of stayed in and watched a lot of horror movies and like age inappropriate movies like yeah. you know and we had grandparents that allowed this to happen yeah sure <laughs> they were like whatever you're not burning the house down you're good yeah here's that here's that copy of Die Hard, you wanted me to tape. You know that guy would be dead if he bled that much. But here you go. I didn't watch it. Yeah. God. Yeah. But no, so, yeah, I forget when I finally, like, watched, like, Creepshow. But I think I was so, like, uh, so used to Creepshow, too. Kind of took me a couple watches to, like, really like it and appreciate it. Um, it's a screenplay by Stephen King, George Romero, R.I.P. R.I.P. And it's funny. When you go back and watch it, you can clearly tell it's George Romero. Mm-hmm. Um, I like how they do the whole, uh, I like how they do the whole, like, comic strip in that movie. Yeah. Like, the comic paneling in that movie. I think that was really cool. I think that was, like, really, uh, ahead of its time. Yeah. I think Creepshow, um, 1 and 2. I like both of them. I know some people, like, are divided. I think some people don't love Creepshow 2. Whatever. I love Creepshow 2. I think too. they're both, like, fun. They're entertaining. They're, like, doing what they're supposed to. Um, and they both hold up, honestly. Some things might not hold up. We'll get to that, but like, yeah, we'll get to that. But uh, you know, they're they're still entertaining. But um, you know, they have the, they have like one of the best things with like the anthology part, like the narrator or like the like thread story that kind of goes throughout, um, the interlude, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And this one starts out with um, Stephen King's son, yeah, who plays the little boy. You can't see. He's, yeah, he's this guy right here. <laughs> That's him, and uh, Billy. That was Billy in the second one. I can't remember. Whatever. I'm like, whatever, the kid. And uh, Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins. Everybody's favorite old man who was old forever. Yeah. John Carpenter's boy. <laughs> I don't know what it was about, like, the 70s and the 80s. Yeah, he's one of those guys, like... Always looked old. Just always looked, like, 40 years old. Him and Ric Flair. Ric Flair, Ric Flair. Did Ric Flair ever look young? I don't think so. No. Like I, I said, he always so. had the white hair. Yeah, he always looked like an older dude. Yeah, same for Tom Atkins. I'm like, what's this guy? Him and me, Gene Oakland. Yeah. 56 years old? No, he's, like, 22. Oh. So, like, he was the dad, the asshole dad. That's another thing I like about a lot of anthology horror. Not all of it, but some of it. Like, when people get their comeuppance. Oh, yeah. That always makes it easier to digest if someone gets murdered in a creative way. It's like, yeah, they had it coming. So you're like, okay. Yeah. And, um, he, re and he really hit Stephen King's son of it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That? Yeah. It <laughs> he was tells like, that story. <laughs> yeah, it was like an accident, but I was like, oof. But, uh, oh, no, wait. He, he did it. I think he told, like. He didn't do it, like, hard, hard, yeah. He didn't do it hard. Yeah. You know, like, from what I remember the story, like, I guess, like, Stephen King kind of like, hey, okay, you're going to you're gonna go easy on that slap, right? You're going to go easy on that slap. And he's like, I'm going to go as easy as I can, but i, I got to do the scene. Yeah. And he, <laughs> just, he palmed him. I mean, it wasn't hard, but I think if you're getting, if you're like a, oh, he had to be what, like ten or twelve at the time. Yeah. You get slapped in the face from a thirty-some looking fifty-some-year-old man. It's probably still gonna hurt. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, it's Joe Hill though. Like, yeah. He's a he's a great horror writer now himself. So maybe that slap, like, 
you know, helped him along the way. Might have. Yeah. But, but hey, um, you got slapped by Tom Atkins. That's cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a good story to tell at, like, dinner parties and such. <laughs> hey, you know that guy from Halloween 3? Slap. Yeah. <laughs> Connected. Um, yeah, but, you know, I think Creepshow is, like, it's a fun movie. Um, so my favorite story in Creepshow is the Stephen King with the meteor. Oh, the lonesome death of Jordy Burrow. Yes. I feel so bad for him. I do, too. I feel so bad for him. For some reason, like, that's... I mean, not for some reason. Like, that's the one I just gravitate more towards when yeah. I watch it. Well, also, like, moment of silence for when Stephen King used to make these, like, little guest spots in all of yeah. his movies. Like, I always thought that was so cool. Like, Sleepwalkers, um, Pet Cemetery when he was, like, the, um, the, the priest. Yeah. And, um... You know, some of the other things where he kind of, like, showed up, but it, it's just neat. <laughs> the best one is the, uh, the best one's the made-for-TV uh, stand back in the 90s. Stu! Yes. What happened to your leg, Stu? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I forgot about that, but, yeah, he was, he's, like, you know, he's made appearances and everything, but this was, like, the first time, like, he literally, like, starred in it. He yeah. had his own, like, little, you know, section. And he was good. He actually shows you, like, his goofy, because he's, like, he's, like, a really goofy guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he can actually like he acted well. Yeah, he he did well, and I'm I, I think that's a good one. Um, I like it. Obviously, I like um, Father's Day. Father's Day. Father's Classic. Day is a great one. Uh, Another guy who always looked old. Yes. Yes. <laughs> is, it, is it some is it some Harris? Um, is it Tom Harris. The dad. Yeah, or like he's the younger... Oh, no. Is that Ed Harris? Ed Harris. Yeah, yeah. That's like that time period. I feel like everyone yeah. looks so old all the time. The hell were they drinking back then? What was in the water back we're then? We're probably drinking just black coffee and, and bourbon and shit. Yeah, water from the hose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will do it. <laughs> Not the hose. Um, oh, yeah, it but it, that's like a good one. Like, you know, it comes out the end with her head on the platter. Like, I got my cake. You're just like, wow. That's Well, that's very iconic. So, because, I mean, try going try going through a social media feed on Father's Day without at least one person posting that something for that fucking story. I, you got me a pin. Yeah. You got me that enamel <laughs> pin. And it's basically like, you know, the, the zombie father holding the, the cake platter with the head on it. Was I have it, it on my, my jean jacket. Was it me or Sarah that got you that pin? No, I thought it was you. Could have been right. Sarah. Could have been Sarah. Sarah's, Sarah, Murder Club. Yes, yes. Is very cool, very known and very cool for getting like Best gift like giver. That. Yes, yeah. like oh, super yeah, thoughtful. And she has got me some very cool stuff. I, for some reason, thought it was you. Like, Sarah, if it was you, thank you. Sarah, this was actually a gift from you, too. <laughs> yes. See? So, awesome. yes, she's the best. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's just, like, it's good. And then um, the something to tide you over, that's a great one. That's a great one, and probably it might be the only real time you see Liam Neeson play a heartless fucking bastard. <laughs> it's, um... Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen. Leslie. 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 In editing. Eddie, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it, it is. It's wild because you do see Leslie Nielsen, and he's the villain, and we're yeah. just used to seeing him in like um, the fucking naked gun. the naked gun movies. Like he's always like a goofball, but like yeah, he's a real bastard in that. He's a real bastard. And uh, I always think about that because I'm like God, drowning. What a terrible way to go! But in salt water. In salt water. Whew. And just awful. like. You know, obviously, so, spoiler alert, um, what's, what's that story? So, it's basically Ted Danson's character was messing with this guy's wife. Yeah, they're having an affair. The wife was going to leave him. Right, but the, he was a real scumbag, which is why she wanted to leave. Yeah, he was like a psycho. Yeah. Sure. And uh, he found out, and he kind of kind of does like a move like in The Vanishing, where it's like, hey, if you want to find out, you know, what where she's at or what she's doing, you got to come with me and do this. And then it's just like a trap. It's a it's a trap to get him dug into a hole on a beach before the tide comes. And what's he do? He rigs up the television so he can watch th the same thing happening to the woman in a different location. It's very, yeah, uh, yeah it's pretty, uh, pretty harrowing pretty way to die. Sure. Which also, like, that guy, like, what a criminal genius back in, what, 1982. In you 19... somehow... 
figured out how to rig a TV. And remember, TVs used to be super big yeah. on your floor. You gotta love her. You gotta love her. Like these eighty pound two TVs. Yeah, for this. but it was yeah. They were they were heavy as shit. Is that a hundred pound VCR? You got? Yeah, Come he's on. got he's got this whole very impressive setup for nineteen eighty two. That's how you knew he was like a criminal genius and rich. But yeah, like, yeah that money. I got this disposable TV. I'll just let the tide take it away. I'm like, well, now to the okay. I don't want to pick it too much apart, but I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, oh. What kind of fucking power was he using? He was running it from his Jeep. But, but, but what about the other? Okay, oh, maybe that was okay. So that was pre-taped, right? I think we so. The woman. I think he killed her previously. There you go. So we figured um, it. Out. We figured it out. Yeah. So, <laughs> and that's how that works. Yeah. But you know, and then at the end, you know, this this guy thinks he's like got it all figured out. He's gonna mm. like enjoy like a, a drink and like watch these two people die. Cause, yeah. Again. Yeah. Cause what a what a freak! But uh, and then they come back, and they kill him. They 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 like put him in the hole. You know, I can hold my breath for a long time. It's like fucking drowning. Yeah, that's gonna be the worst fucking thing. Yeah, you got two you got two zombies. They're pissed. They came back from the dead. Mm -hmm. So you get your comeuppance, and basically, like that's it. You're about to go out like with that. Very poetic justice. Yeah, you're story. about to go out the way you just took them out. So yeah. that's a good one. It's very well. That's a, you know you talk about the come things. Yeah, that's that's a that's an awesome come up story. Yeah, yeah. You're just like okay, this this guy, you know, he's gotten his uh, revenge, and that's that's a great one. I've seen Creep Show a bunch of times. You know which one story I really don't like? Like I know what happens, but I feel like I've seen it the least out of all the ones. Is the uh, is the monster in the chest? With Adrian Barbeau. The Crate? The Crate. That's so it. that is like one of my favorites. And it's basically, um, that's a Stephen King short story. Mm -hmm. um, it's really good. That's like one of the best ones, I think. Um, it's got, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. He's from a bunch of John Carpenter movies. Like oh, he yeah. was in The Mist. And, uh, he is, uh, so we can't think of his name, but he's, yeah, he's the priest in The Fog. Yeah. Right? He's the guy who they come and get the Golden Cross. It's not Hal Holbrook, is it? I want to say that's correct. Okay. I could be wrong. Yeah. So, Tell us in the comments section. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, his wife is like an alcoholic and super domineering and like, you know, she's always like emasculating him and like coming down on him. It starts off with them being like a dinner, like a, I don't know, faculty party. Mm. And she's like basically dressing him down in front of like a bunch of his like new co workers. She's very, she's eerily reminiscent because they're you know, going kind of tie it to the Twilight Zone, not really tie it to the Twilight Zone. She's eerily reminiscent of like my Burgess Meredith's character, and like there's time now. Oh, yeah. Like his wife. Like oh, his yeah. wife just thinks she's a total fool and is always picking on him. Yeah. And ruining like his, ruining his po awesome poetry book. Just like a yes. straight up jerk. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She's like, like pretty terrible and pretty, pretty terrible. And basically she, um, you know, he has like these fantasies of killing her, but he's kind of like meek and mild. Like he's a good, well, you think he's like a good guy. You're like, all right, this guy's like been suffering with this for years. So his friend gets a call from somebody at the um, university that they work at, which is closed because it's like the summer, the off season or something. Yeah, they're doing um, like, they do a renovation. Yeah, and it's getting ready to like, they're cleaning everything up, sprucing everything up, and they're getting ready to like have like students come back in soon. And the janitor calls this guy and he's like, you know, I found this box in the basement. It's pretty crazy. Like it, it looks very old. Like maybe you can come in and check it out. And so the guy's like, all right, I'm going to leave this party. I'm going to check it out. So they go, they find out, um, the janitor like tries to pry it open and you see these like very creepy yellow eyes. And it's like, there's this like monster, this like Arctic monster, some mm -hmm. kind of like long fangs. It almost looks like a primate of some sort. Yeah. Um, and it pulls the janitor in and like that scene where he's like getting killed, where it like kind of has like the horror, like the like animation kind of mm -hmm. like with the blood and like the like lighting and stuff that in that episode particularly, like they do that a lot. I think yeah. it's pretty, pretty cool how they do that, but you know, he gets killed. And so, you know, like some other stuff transpires and basically the guy comes, the friend who is also in a bunch of horror movies. He's actually in the reanimator. Okay. Right. He's the head. The Is he the guy from reanimator? Yeah, I think so. Um, Noah's face. Yeah. So he um, basically, you know, goes back to, we'll just say Hal Holbrook. If that's not his name, sorry about it. I don't know how to refer him to anything else. 
Uh, I think you're right, though. Yeah, yeah. Henry. His name is Henry in the, in the show, so we'll just call him Henry. So he goes and he, like, tells them about, like, what's happening, and basically Henry goes to check it out, and he lures his wife there. And, you know, she gets, she gets got. She gets, she gets got. Kind of, kind of looks like it's not going to happen at first. Yeah. It does. And yeah. I, I think, I think Tom Savini uh, created that monster. He did. Because there's, like, some really, like, if you look on the World Wide Web, <laughs> there's a lot of, like, pictures of him and the monster. So he yeah. created that monster. Um, so basically, he pulls her into that crate. And he, she's she gone, and basically she's gone. she gone. So basically, you know, Henry like like ties the he cleans everything up. He like gets like a padlock, and because they had taken the padlock off the crate, there were mm-hmm. like chains and stuff around it. And he puts it back on, and he puts it in the back of his car, cleans everything up, makes it look like you know nothing's happened. And he goes to like um some query query query. Quarry? <laughs> a quarry? A quarry. <laughs> a quarry. The word is quarry. Spell it. So he goes to this quarry and he like dumps the, the crate in there and he thinks everything's all good. I don't know why you would think to dump a wooden crate into over like a giant cliff into like a big body of water and like it wasn't it gonna, not like, gonna like just smash. <laughs> yeah, like dog, are you kidding me? Set that thing on fire. Like what do you mean? Like, so basically, at the end, you just kind of see, uh, he, he tells his boy, like, yeah, look, I got rid of it, and I got rid of her, and everything's all good. Everything's fine. Everything's not fine. Everything's not fine. Because they show his eyes underneath the thing, and then you just kind of, like, see the crate explode. <laughs> so congratulations, you played yourself. Now you got this monster on the loose. Yeah, and you know what? In, in retrospect, it's like, I would love to see, uh, I'd love to see the story comes up with, like, yeah, well, you know, you were the last person to see her alive. Like, people are looking for her? Where is she? <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, nah, like, she went to, like, some exercise class. One of the things about that movie, too, is, like, she pours this, like, giant cup of milk, and then, like, I don't know if, I guess it's, like, bourbon or something, but she gets this, like, brown liquid and, like, pours that into the milk. I'm like, what in the hell? Like, yeah. I, I feel like I was, like, going to, like, die just, like, watching her drink this. And I'm like, what, what could that possibly taste like? People in the fucking 80s, man, they're fu- they were fucking weird. Yeah, I'm like, oh, she came home, like, she's out drinking, obviously, she came home, she poured herself a tall glass of milk, I was like, weird flex, but then she went ahead and, like, poured more alcohol in there, yeah. and I was like, huh. I'm like, milk, really? Not, not water? No. When it's... it curdled up, like, I'm, I'm confused as to what happened here. I don't know, I know, I, like, that's the last thing, what do they put in white Russians? So they, they do put, like, cream, I think it's, like, heavy cream. But yeah, but straight milk, though, with bourbon. Yeah, I don't know, I mean, I guess, like... Maybe that's in the same vein as a white Russian. That tracky, that Jackie Treehorn makes a hell of a Caucasian. <laughs> but yeah, like I don't, I don't drink. I don't, I don't like uh, generally. I don't drink white Russians or anything where there's like a mm-hmm. cream based drink. And I'll have an Irish car bomb at St. Patrick's Day. That's just like as creamy as I get with yeah. beer. I'm like, nah, beer's not. I don't like thick beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not great. So we got uh, the something to tide you over. Um, then there's crate. the crate. There's uh, Father's Day. There's the one with the bugs. The bugs. That one is like my least favorite. Mine too, because I hate bugs. I mean, I hate bugs as well. But um, and the guy's like a real like bastard, and he's obviously got some kind of like he's a like germaphobe, like a real Howard Hughes yeah. kind of guy, like in a penthouse, everything's sterile. Yeah, it looks like real law. Uh, so his apartment kind of looks like the. Uh, the Wonka room where they're making the, th- where they're sending the fucking chocolate bars. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, is it? Everything's just like white and looks like almost like not of that time period. Yeah. And he's just like, I don't know, these bugs start getting in. Like, you hear, like, there's this hysterical phone call. He obviously, like, runs some kind of company mm-hmm. and um, somebody killed herself and the wife is on the phone because of him. He did something, yeah, called somebody, like killed himself. Piece yeah. Of shit person. Yeah. And the wife, like, calls and she's like hysterical. And, like, you know, like, I hope you die, I hope you rot, whatever. She's going on and on. And then, like, these bugs slowly start infiltrating his apartment. And it's disgusting. Like, and, they're, and they're cockroaches, too. Oh, yeah. Like, and there's, like, full on... I think they used real... They did. They used real... I mean, back then, like, 
well, what else were you gonna do? You had to like do something. I feel like a child in this chair. You had to get myself <laughs> situated. Um, I'm all like, my feet don't touch the floor. <laughs> but um, yeah, so like it's real crazy. Um, but you know, just like see all the bugs and it's it's whatever. And then at the end, like they basically like come out of his body. Like th that replica of him yeah. is like pretty good, but you like see him like come out of his whole body. It's just more it's more body horror, I feel like, than anything else, like gore. Yeah, it's you know. Wonder if uh wonder if that would that movie would have been like if Cronenberg did that scene. Ugh. Oh my god, it probably would have been straight nightmare <laughs> fuel, like just disgusting. That uh so I was telling you earlier, I'm pretty sure it was that part of that movie when my aunt Rose saw it, RIP. Uh, saw it back in the day. I don't know how old she was, but I'm kind of guessing she was probably like teenager or like maybe early 20s. That part of that movie just legit made her throw up. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's enough to make your like skin crawl just like watching it. Yeah. You're like, oh, like just awful. And the fact, like I said, you like today if they did that movie, they'd all be CGI roaches. These were real roaches. Yeah, I, 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 well, I don't know because I feel like sometimes they use some real bugs or some real birds, like whatever like the scene yeah. is. They'll mix it, like, in tangent with fake stuff. Yeah, kind, yeah. But... Well, that's, like, that story about, like, Candyman, like, Tony Todd, like... Oh, yeah, the bees. He, yeah, and I think it was, like, what? A th was it $1,000 per bee sting? Because that scene where the bees were coming yeah. out of his mouth, and he got stung, like, what was it? Like, something crazy. Like It was something, yeah, it was something really wild. I want to say it was, like, 17 or 27 times, but he, like, negotiated to be, like, yo, every time I get stung, like, I'm getting $1,000. Yeah. But they used real bees for that, and you got to think, like, it looked amazing. It did. Like, how, like... It's... That was flawless, and I feel like it'd be kind of hard to, like, do that with, like, a CGI. I think so, too. Without, and still making it kind of uh, hold up over time. That's the thing about CGI. Like, I feel like even the best CGI, yeah. you got maybe, like, a... If you got, like, the Disney budget of the Avengers, you got, like, maybe a five, six-year window where it's not going to look, like, completely bad. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's I think they would do mostly, turning. yeah, mostly, like, CGI, but I feel like they'd have to mix in some, like, real... Yeah. Insects or whatever, for whatever the scene is. And they said that, so for that scene, I remember, like, Tom Savini in an interview was saying, like, so I guess when they did the body, you couldn't see them, but I guess they had, like, tubes. And they were just using, like, air to blow these things, and it was just, like, they blew all the, and they had to time it right, because they all had to, like, kind of go at the same time, I think. Yeah. And yeah, but they were using, I forget how many bugs they said they used. It was, like, a, a lot. Well, also, that's, like, another thing. So, like, you have everybody being, like, we got to protect the bugs. Like, bugs have rights, too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everyone would be like, you know, you'd have, like, a PETA, like, on set being like, don't step on any bugs. Like, so I feel yeah. like you'd have to kind of do, like, more CGI than anything right now. You would have to, because, yeah, I couldn't imagine how many, uh, I couldn't imagine how many bugs lost their lives, their lives in the making of that movie. There had to have been a couple. Yeah, I mean. Talking about, like, air shooting them through a tube. Yeah, I'd like imagine, like, like, a lot body. of those bugs died, yeah. obviously. Um, but, yeah. So, that, like, that one's, like, my least favorite. I it's like it's, like it's definitely my least favorite. And, like I said, it's really, really just that scene, I think, is, like, really what stands out of that episode, of that, uh, of that movie. Yeah. I mean, it is, like, horrific in its own sense, but, like, as far as, like, the actual horror part of it. Oh, yeah, it's still, like, that's the one where I, hey, you only got an hour, which one's you gonna watch? I fucking ain't watching that one now yeah i mean yeah i'd <laughs> say it for sure so i think um what is there's an i feel like there's another one. no that was all of them the lonesome, lonesome death of jordy Burrell. yeah the crate um father's day. father's day something to tide you over and they kind of and like i said they kind of got like this so they kind of got like the side story going on between this boy who's got the kind of very conservative dad who thinks creeps your comics are gonna like rot your brain. I think his name is Billy. I'm, I'm I know I'm it's gonna, Billy. The second one. I'm pretty Billy. sure his name is Billy. I'm gonna go with Billy because he's like that's why. Remember that's why God made fathers, babe. Like the dad, like after he like clearly abuses his son, and then the, the mom's like, maybe you were a little hard on him. Maybe you were a little hard on him, and he's like, that's why God's made. You know, God made fathers, and he's like drinking his like Schlitz beer. Mm -hmm. Schlitz beer. He's got like the he's got the standard like. 70s, 80s dad, like, like plaid shirt. It's like a or cardigan or something. Yeah, you know, he, you know, he played, like uh, played high school football oh, for sure. Time. For sure. 
big time. You know, as he's gonna try, like, yeah, we should be in the sports. Why is he reading these comic books? <laughs> You're disappointing your father. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're going to baseball lessons tomorrow, whether you want to or not. Oh boy. <laughs> but yeah, like, and so he's like a real prick, and you feel for this kid. The kid's obviously a little unhinged as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, we see at the end, like, the trash men are coming. The dad threw the the comic out. And, uh, big mistake. Big, big, big mistake. <laughs> a, a big, huge mistake. So basically, uh, you know, the dad starts having like these pains, and you're like, "What's going on?" Well, we find out that Billy had ordered a um, a voodoo doll from the back of the Creepshow magazine, and he was like basically sticking the shit out of it because it was his dad. Yeah. Which to me, when I was a kid, I I think I thought voodoo dolls were going to be more of a problem yeah. as we got older. Like I was very scared of that. Well, and you, I, I figured that would be more of an issue as we got older, but did, did the serpent wood. Did the Serpent and the Rainbow have anything to do with that? Serpent and the Rainbow, man. <laughs> Another traumatizing movie from yeah. my youth. That oh, was yeah. a great movie. I was so scared of Voodoo. I was like, I never want to go to Haiti. Let's, why would I ever go there anyway? But like, I was like, I'm never going there. There's like all kinds of shit popping off. Yeah. I remember seeing, uh, I remember seeing that. Um, the old Bella Gosa movie, White Zombies, all about Voodoo. Yeah. Um, and, uh, man, even the scene in Child's Play. Yeah. Where he's got the voodoo doll. I remember seeing that, like, way too young, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I was like, man, voodoo dolls are so scary. Like. Yeah, I should. Yeah. Because I thought fucking, I thought voodoo and magic were real. <laughs> yeah. When you're a kid, your imagination is, like, running wild. You see something, you're like, that's plausible. That could totally happen. Well, come to find out, they were like, uh, I forget what it was. I think it was, we were watching Serpent and the Rainbow, and they were like, yeah, you know. I think it was probably my mom was like. Yeah, you know, they really can do that. They really can make people zombies. So I'm like, what? Yeah. You're like, this is not what I wanted to say. Like, this is not the reassurance I was looking for. But, yeah. yeah. Dahmer tried it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he tried, but, it, you know, unsuccessfully. Unsuccessful. Um, yeah, because they, like, just blew that smoke in your face, whatever that potion was, and then that was it. I was like, man, this movie's terrifying. I know, man. That fucking movie. That's another movie I gotta do, like, wanna do, like, an episode on. Maybe do an episode on Voodoo. Then we got Creepshow 2. Creepshow 2. Creepshow 2. Bruce's favorite. I love Creepshow 2. I like it as well. I don't... I, I think it's pretty good. I think Creepshow 2 is like... so. I mean, Stephen King... Well, so The Raft. The Raft, which is the second story, is a legit Stephen that King is story. A, that is a Stephen King story. Um, it's a, it's a Skeleton Crew? I think so. I want to say it is too. I think it is Skeleton Crew. Also, Night Shift. Night Shift. Best short story book there is, yes. in my opinion. Yes. I've probably read that book about a hundred times. Mike Flanagan. Love Mike Flanagan. Yeah. He's doing the Dark Tower. Hope it turns out good. I think I, he'll do it justice. I think he will. He's I like, I, he I mean, most of the things he's done have been pretty great. Like, oh, I've been yeah. like a big fan. And I, I feel like if anyone's going to do the Dark Tower, it's got to be him. I think if the worst thing on your resume is the Midnight Club... Which I still really like. I like the Midnight Club. A lot of people didn't. But I, I do. Whatever. I was like bummed there wasn't gonna be a second season. I felt like there Me was like too. so much stuff we needed to know about. I know there was a, there was a lot of build up to some really cool things. Yeah, that, that's uh, unfortunate. It is, and you know, maybe one day they'll be like, "Ah, eh, fuck it, we'll do it." It could happen. I think part of it was him leaving Netflix as well. Yeah. So there was I think probably he was having some trouble with Netflix. Yeah, he did. He like I think his contract ended. So if you notice, like I think he's with, is it? Hulu? Is he going to do Hulu, or is it Amazon Prime? I think, it, I think it might be Amazon. So, yeah, he basically is done. Like, he did all that stuff, like, and it was all Netflix. Like, um, Hill House. Um, Bly Manor. Bly Manor. Which is basically um, the turn of the screw. Sure. And um, he did... Uh, Midnight Mass. Was so, good. so good. Yeah, like, all those things were, like, Netf like Netflix game. exclusive. So now, I think it, it's kind of, like, weird, because, like, there was not going to be a second season of Midnight Club, and everyone was bashing it. But that was at the end of him, like, his yeah. tenor at, like, what Netflix the, anyway, so... So is he doing... Because now they're kind of... So they're kind of taking that model... We'll get back to Creepshow, too. We never stay inside the lines here. Would have been Marvel in Bar. it. Would have been in it. So they're kind of doing... Like, they're, they're, like, taking the same model, right? Of, like, Hill House and Bly Manor, and now they're applying that to, like, Edgar Allan Poe stuff. So Why, doing, I think they're doing, what, The Fall of the House of Usher? It's The Fall of the House of Usher, but I kind of think they're taking some stuff from, uh... I could be wrong on this, but I thought they were also taking some stuff from, like, The Pit and the Pendulum, too. But, yeah, I think it is The Fall of the House of Usher. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see them, like, maybe, like, doing a little bit of a mix. Um, 
I don't know. I, I'm interested to see. I I like Edgar Allan Poe stuff, but like it's that writing style. Same with like H.P. Yeah. Lovecraft. It's like super outdated and kind of hard to get through. Mm-hmm. Like this the the work and like the stories are like great, and obviously they've inspired so many things like that we enjoy like today. Mm-hmm. It's just that writing style that like for me sometimes I'm like, man, this is like a chore to read. It's tough. Like I read uh, like Dracula. I read Dracula not that long ago. Like, for the second time, I was like, you know, I'm a little older now. Maybe I'll appreciate it better. Yeah. Nah, it's still really hard to get through. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, you know, you're reading for enjoyment. Like, I'm not reading, like, this isn't like me reading, like, a college textbook. Like, I just want to, like, read the story and, like, enjoy it. So, like, I just feel like the writing style sometimes, it's, like, painful. I love Hamlet. Put that Mel Gibson movie in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hand me this fucking book. Yeah. Beat it, nerd. Beat it. Okay. Um, yeah, Creepshow 2. Um... Yeah, like I said, so watching Creepshow, I'll tell the funny story about Creepshow 2 first, and you've heard the story many times. There's a story, I think it's the last story, where a a woman is leaving a gentleman's house. I think she might have been drinking. She was, having, she was having an affair. She was having an affair. She was having an affair, and um, with some, it was her side piece, mm-hmm. a young dude, but she was married to like some very successful lawyer, and he was working or something, she overslept and then realized that she had to get home, like, like post haste, like immediately, because mm-hmm. her husband's like, "Yo, where you been?" And so she gets in her car and starts like, like riding like the wind. Yep. And there is a hitchhiker, which she clearly hit and run kind of deal with this hitchhiker, but yes. then the hitchhiker just keeps coming back and showing up and. Every time she tries to like run him down again and do this, like it's just, it's always like that's for the ride, lady. Yeah. That's for the, and this is like by the end, is he's just like Maggled. fucking mush. He sounds like, he, yeah, he sounds <laughs> and he sounds like fucking sound wave from like the Transformers. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not pulling on me. Yeah. So, the story is when I was a kid, probably watching Creepshow Two, way too young. I watched it with my older brothers, and we. Or from Delaware. First in the Union, best in the East. <laughs> Dover, Delaware. It's like an hour away. And I'm pretty he's got a sign that says going to Dover. And, yes. he leaves, and when he kills her, spoiler alert, he like leaves that sign, right? Yeah. My brother should be like, Yeah, this really happened, man. <laughs> and Dover's like an hour away. That guy was trying to hitchhike here. <laughs> And I was like, what? I can totally I can totally hear them saying that. I was a kid thinking one day that I'm gonna go outside and this hitchhiker <laughs> found his way to my house, thanks to my two older brothers. And I told this story before and they were like, I don't remember that. Yeah, that totally does sound like something we would have did. Yeah. <laughs> like when they told you like you didn't like certain foods and such. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So out of my three brothers, I am the smallest. Because all my life, I was told, like, uh, oh, man, now you don't want that. Remember you ate that and you, you threw up? Nah, you don't want that. And they would eat it. They just they'd, they'd rob me of my food. You just for that. You're just, like, the classic little brother. They're just hacking yeah, on you. Yeah, it's cool. We're, we're, we're very, we're all, all three of us are very close. But now that I'm older, I'm like, you know, I do have that, uh, I still have, like, that six-year-old palate. I wonder if that's really why. Could be, but, you know, it could be a little from column A, a little from column B. Like, you know, maybe that's why. Maybe it got in your head. Maybe you just didn't really like these things. Maybe I one time did really like spinach. But they just liked it a little more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the thanks for the ride, lady. Uh, the lady is so annoying. Yes. She's, so the, the dialogue in the movie, besides the thanks for the ride lady and the people that saw her hit and run the guy, it's it's internal dialogue. It's supposed yeah. to be, but it's her like speaking to herself out loud. And it's like, I can't remember her name. It's like Mrs. So-and-so. So she's like, you really did it this time, Mrs. So-and-so. Mm-hmm. She's actually just kind of the worst. Like, even though she committed like murder and drove away, which is like obviously the cardinal sin. Uh, she's just a, just an annoying fucking person in general. So when she dies at the end, you're like, ah, eh. <laughs> you know, no great loss. Not a female Stephen King written character, but kind of seems like one. I love Stephen King. He is like one of my favorite authors. And and this has come up on the show before, but I was like, okay, I cannot wait till Nicole's on the he, show because Nicole was the first one to really bring this to my attention. He is like one of the best. <laughs> like I love a lot of his stuff. Like lots of lots of you know hits. 
lots of misses. One of the big misses with him, he does not know how to write a female character that like is not the worst. I feel like all the female <laughs> characters he writes are so fucking annoying. They're like, they're just shrews. They're just like people that are like complaining or whiny or like they, they're just like, or like, you know, he like tries to overcompensate. Like this person is this, like, I just think that like, he's a great writer, but I feel like when he tries to write a female character, it just, it always goes flat. It's like no good. Some of the, everyone's got that Achilles heel. Yeah. I mean, it's just not great. Like, and some of, some of the prime examples of that is like Lois from Insomnia. Yeah. She's so annoying. I'm like, God, do we, are we sure we don't want to just cut her life string and like get rid of her? Cause she's annoying as hell. She was annoying. Um, Odetta, Susanna, whatever you want to call her from the Dark Tower yes. books. The she's, worst. So yeah, she's probably like my least favorite just character. The, the worst. And, like, in, especially in the Dark Tower, but like yeah, of all like the Stephen King, like like female wise, yeah, she like there's a couple of times where like it doesn't bother me in the second book because you kind of like getting to know her and stuff like that. Yeah. But by the time like the by the time like the sixth and seventh book come around, I'm just like. Ugh. You got to think she's been three different people. And all three of them suck. Like, yeah. You got that. And she kind of becomes like a fourth one, right? Odetta Walker, Odetta Holmes. Uh, you got, uh, she becomes Susanna. She yeah. was also Mia. Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking, for four. part five, right? Yeah. The Gallo one. If you never read the Dark Tower book. books, this is probably all like, what are you talking about? But yeah. the point is, she, here. Yeah. point is, she's annoying. In any, any form. Whatever character, one, two, three, four, yeah. worst. She's annoying, and then just like, I mean, in general, like, I just feel like he writes these characters, and they're always... Schizo annoying for any of them. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, they're just all like, the worst. I'm like, can you just like, maybe like, a little better? Just like, and I'm like, where are you, get, where are you drawing this inspiration from, is what I want to know. Well, he even kind of, like, didn't he kind of say that in an interview? Didn't he kind of admit one time, like, yeah, you know, writing these characters really, like, writing female characters always, like, kind of gave me trouble. That's kind of what I love something. about him. It's like, he doesn't, like, take himself super seriously. He kind of, he knows he's got, like, strengths and weaknesses, and he's not, like, so full of himself where he's like, Phew. like, won't take any criticism. I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't know what you mean. Like, he knows, like, come on, man, you know, you need a little work on those female characters, okay? I think after, uh, yeah. There's a lot of other terrible ones, too, but I they're, like, slightly <laughs> escaping me right now. You can't, you can't take yourself too seriously if you, like, admit that you directed Maximum Overdrive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How much cocaine do you think he was on? Oh, man. I don't even... I don't know. I mean, I think he was, like... I'll say it was probably, like, Motley Crue level. Oh, yeah, man. He was, <laughs> he was all yeed up. You know what I mean? That. Early 80s Ozzy Osbourne level. <laughs> you know? Really, yeah. I still enjoy that movie, even though it's like, you know. It's fun. It's fun. It's not going to win any awards, but you know, it's all right. It's got the man himself, Emilio Estevez. Oh, man. The um, Mighty Duck Man. <laughs> the Mighty Duck Man, Emilio Estevez. He tips his hat. Emilio. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know. Just that, that always, like, drives me nuts. I'm like, why can't you, why don't you know what you're doing here? But, like... It's just like a lot, and I wish it would be different. Rose, Rose Matter. Oh yeah. All those people. I'm like looking. We got the Stephen King pillow here, so if I, I can just look here and tell you there like, you go. yeah, this person was annoying. This person was annoying in here. Like, but anyway, to kind of take it back to the beginning of the episode with my intro, like <laughs> I, Bruce and I went to grade school together. I've known him since the first grade. Yeah. And one of my my first memory of Bruce, which I do remember, even though I have early onset Alzheimer's coming my way is we were in the first grade and our teacher was Miss Saka. Yeah, I love Miss Saka. Yeah, and we were going through introductions, like this is this person, this is this person. And I remember she got to Bruce and she was like, oh, Bruce Marvel. And he, and he was like, yeah, Bruce, like the boss, Bruce Springsteen. And I was Who just I like, am named after. Yeah, and that's like was my mom's like favorite singer of all time. And I always <laughs> remember that. And so we went to St. Anthony's grade school together and we endured all that. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, it was in grade school where we started. I was, re I was like borrowing your Goosebump books. It started with Goosebumps and you would lend them to me. Mm -hmm. And then it moved on to like other, like more adult, like R.L. Stein books, Christopher Pike. Yeah. And then we started getting into like the Stephen King books. And I mean, we were reading Stephen King books young. We were. So I think between. That's why we reread them. I mean, I was yeah. reading them at like, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth grade and stuff like that. When we got to high school with Del Castle. And we were like, you know, 
we really latched on like that first couple weeks because like we you know we knew each other yeah and a new school would like we didn't know any strangers in a strange land yeah. that's where we became best friends and so like the first our first class was sustained silent reading yeah so we were just like trading those we were like trading those books we read a lot of Stephen King books and like between between 1996 to 1998 I think we read like almost all of them. we did we also did a lot of partying in that time we did too and so that's probably why we that's probably another reason and why that, we don't yeah remember. and maybe that's why we don't remember as, as well <laughs> as we should but yeah think about like I'm like these kids don't know how good they got it like I wish no. so, I wish like you're going to school oh you get to have this like Sustain silent reading. You just get to sit here and read. I'm like, oh my god, stay a child forever if you can. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, I love this. Is high school? This yeah. is fucking awesome. People are like, I have nightmares. I went back to high school. Here's me wishing. Yeah, like, I'd love to go back. back. What do you mean? I wanna go. Back. <laughs> Any money? R.I.P. R.I.P. No, like, so yeah, when I first got to um, high school and we were doing sustained silent reading, I'll never forget it because the green mile was still coming out in the little books. They yes. weren't even all out yet. Oh my god, that talk about. Like awesome marketing for that. Like you would get it. Like remember they would like books at like the grocery store. Yeah. Like you could get books like all over, and people were like dying for these books, and you, they were so small, and you would get them, and you would like plow through them, and you would just have to wait for the next part of the story to be unleashed. And it that's another one. Like oh my god, the book, the movie. That was yeah. a great movie, great adaptation that's of the book. That's a great adaptation. And I cried at both. Like sobbed mm -hmm. my eyes. Like just sob, um, because like what a pure like character. Like what. How sad and tragic was that? Also, child death. Two kids killed in the beginning. Yeah. More child death. More child death. And you know, going back to like the the one I forgot, it's not child death, but I think one of the most egregious things I've read, Stephen King with child fucking library police. Like, oh, that was awful. There was no awful. child death, but that was I like... Can't, I can't read that now. Yeah. Well, I'll never reread that story. I'll never reread it either. That's like another thing. Like, very uh, heavy-handed with like the rape. Yes. The rape and, like, the, like, you know, like, the molestation and stuff, like... His son does it, too. Yeah, but the thing is, like, it's, like, those things, and I mean, like, as, I mean, for most people, like, as a woman, whatever, like, they that's, like, my most terrifying shit, obviously, yeah. so, like, that does, like, I feel like that does, like, evoke, like, a fear within mm -hmm. people, but, like, it doesn't have to be all the time. We don't have to have it, like, every single No, story, it, like, you know? yeah, we all, we all realize that it's scary. Yeah, yeah, we don't always have to, like, be reminded that it, that's happening. Okay, so we got way off topic. Oh, we do that all the time. I mean, we do we do that all the time as well. These conversations go on. These are this is like a normal. This is like a day in life. For there us, you honestly. go. What I, like you said, and that's the whole like point. Like I yeah. had a couple of people come on the show, and they're like, "What? I don't know." I'm like, "We're just here to talk about stuff, man." <laughs> you know I was like, like, "I've done zero prep. I just kind of came on. I was like, I guess we're just going to talk like we're talking yeah, in your living room. Exactly. Maybe. Exactly. Yeah. You're saying, yeah, yeah, we're not we're not here to be IMDb. They yeah. have a whole other website for that. Yeah." People don't know because they don't see the editing process, but you'll be surprised. I can't tell you how many times, like, Marvel movies come up, wrestling comes up. People talking to you about Marvel movies and yeah, wrestling? Yeah, right? Like, what do you Go mean? figure. Yeah, they, but they come up. It's like, <laughs> all right, Eddie, you know there's a horror show. We got to cut, like, this whole hour. <laughs> but it's good stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's not horror, man. We got to cut it. Yeah, yeah. Just the facts. Just the facts, man. No one, no one wants to hear... Old man, get off my lawn about the state of Marvel movies right now, which is, would be coming for me. Yes, it, w it sure would be. <laughs> but anyway, Creepshow 2. So Creepshow 2. <laughs> Bring it back. Bring it back in. Um, yeah, so um, The Raft, that's a Stephen King story. That's good. Now that, like, I listened to, like, a couple other, like, horror podcasts. Um, and one of them, it was the King cast. And they, like, talk about different Stephen King movies and, like, books and stuff. And they bring, like... Kingcast is very good. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a great show. They, and they bring, like, a bunch of, like, different people in there. But I remember them talking about The Raft and about, like, how problematic it is. And it kind of is, like, in a way, if you think about it. In the, in the actual, like, we're just talking... We're not talking about the short story. We're going to be talking about the movie. But, like, the girl's, like, kind of unconscious. And he's kind of, like, starting to, like, make out with her. Yeah. Maybe because I've never been in, like a close to death situation where there was like a, I don't know, a monster or something. That's like the last thing I'm thinking about. Yeah, you're right. But I feel like a lot of people, like not just Stephen King and like this movie, like I've said that before. I feel like, I'm trying to think of another like good scenario where that's come up. But it's like, yeah, I think we're getting ready to die, man. We should just do it. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like it's like nah I'm not really aroused man I'm yeah. gonna die I'm not this really fucking I'm giant not, blob yeah. is gonna eat me I'm not I'm not feeling it right now like 
I, you know, I got a headache. I'm not yeah. doing it. I don't if know. If we live, call me. Yeah, yeah. If we live, I could see myself getting real, real pumped up and like, yeah. Yeah, maybe let's, happy to be alive. Yeah, but... let's see what it's all about then. That's like more like you got more of a shot then than me being on this rack. But so what they were discussing was like how the girls like. You know, and that's the girl that he liked. Like, you know, they always got to have, like, it's like the ginger and Mary Ann. So, like, you got mm-hmm. the one girl, and she's, like, kind of, like, plain Jane. And then you get the other girl. And uh, Laverne, I think her name was. Laverne. Laverne or something. <laughs> you know, she's, like, basically got, like, you know, like, she's got, like, she's stacked. She's got the, like, red nails. And she looks good. Well, like, mm-hmm. she's, you know, she's the, the hot one. She's the, she's the top cheerleader. Yeah, sure. And so the guy, like, in the, in the story and in the, you know in the movie he clearly like you know prefers her so at the end it's just those two left mm-hmm. the, the, first of all let's back it up the jock the guy that thought he was gonna like out swim this thing yeah like and he was like i'm getting ready to like jump in i'm faster than that thing first of all here's me no the fuck you're not like why'd you ever think you were gonna like do anything but he doesn't even get a chance he gets like sucked through because that yeah. very gruesome death he, he gets, gets killed. yeah so he literally gets like broken and fucking Oh my half. god, it's and it's it's pretty graphic. Like it it's is, pretty yeah. good. It's a pretty good death. Pretty solid acting. Pretty solid. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets like pulled in. But like the fact that he was so fucking arrogant, like he was like, I'm gonna out swim it. And it's like you're not even gonna get the chance, my guy. Yeah, like you don't you definitely like, okay, I don't really feel any uh sympathy for this guy. You sound know, like he was kinda like a fucking tool. Well he was like, yeah, he was kinda like <laughs> clearly like, you know, he was like on some like college date rape shit. Like oh, yeah. he like he was like remember that like the girl's upset and he's like Quiet fried pop you. Like, yeah, 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 nothing says let me calm you down than the threat of, like, let me smack you in the face, like, yeah. violence. Yeah, sure, I'm just gonna, why didn't I think of that? I'll just calm myself down then. Yeah, you're right, 1950. I'll just <laughs> fucking watch this blob. I'm um, like, this guy was clearly a terrible person. <laughs> so then, you know, his boy, like, the, the guy, like, you're like, all right, like, this guy's, like, okay, he's kind of nerdy, whatever. But then, like, the girl is, like, laying there. He's supposed to be keeping watch, mind yeah. you. So she gets some rest because if it goes underneath, it could pull you through, as we've seen with, mm-hmm. with the dude. Um, so she's like, I'm exhausted. And he's like, all right, I'll keep watch. You go. So instead of keeping watch, he's like, basically like, you know, trying to put like some kind of rapey moves. Yeah. On like her. he's like, she's sleeping and he's trying to like, you know, put the moves on her. And like, you can say, oh, well, like she seemed into whatever she's sleeping. She's waking up. And then you find out this guy done fucked up because it came through the blob came underneath the raft and it starts to like eat her through the raft. It's terrible. Yeah, and she like her death is very very gruesome too. It is, and it's like not only were you about to, like be assaulted, but now you just got killed. Like it's kind of terrible. So they did they brought that up. I didn't really think about it before, and then I was like, yeah, that's kind of it's kind of kind of fucked up. But it is, yeah, really yeah. Cool. So I think, and then this guy. You know, he should have jumped in immediately while it was distracted. But he waited. And he basically watched her get killed, and then he's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna swim for it." And he does. He makes a valiant effort. He swims for it. What oh, happens? Pride comes before the fall. He gets to the, mm-hmm. he gets to the, you know, the shore, and he's like, "I beat you. You didn't get far enough back." Because then that thing like comes over him like a tidal wave, and he gone. Don't talk shit, man. Yeah, Just- like. You got like be sure that you've won the race before you start gloating. Exactly, you know what I, I mean. And it's funny. It's like because it with so it, it ends with it panning over. Like, hey, there's a sign. Like, do not swim. And it's like, yeah, I just love how the people are like, all right, man, we're just gonna put a sign here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people read it before they go jump in it. Yeah, he maybe put it like a little, a little like maybe uh, trim these front, bushes a little front and center. Also, like I do love how it pans out in the car, the like Trans Am. Mm-hmm. it's like some bitch in 80s car it's like sitting there like the, the radio is still playing and yeah. stuff like that that's kind of like a cool scene at the end it's it's a really cool scene and like i said it's one of those stories where like you can't look too if you look too into it you'll you can pick it apart yeah but it's still really cool and the story like so it's literally based off that short story the short story they kind of the guy actually gets off like really light because i think what the story is like the blob kind of but it's blob mass whatever it is kind of like if you stare into it long enough, it almost like starts to like kind of hypnotize you. Yeah. So like the, and they kind of leave it with, well, you know, if you're getting like hypnotized, the death is like less painful because you accept it. Yeah. It kind of like, I think it like speaks to you in your mind in like some mm-hmm. weird way where it's basically like, yeah, just like look into my dead lights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like right? basically. Way more, way more supernatural shit. Yeah. <laughs> supernatural shit. Supernatural shit. Uh, yeah. So that's like, a, that's like, I think one of the best ones there. And then you got, um. Was it Chief Woodenhead? Chief Woodenhead. That's like another one that's interesting because we discussed this earlier. So the main heavy, the main bad guy is like a Native American 
who clearly is not me. And he's white. Like, he's the dude from Mine Hunters. He's the fucking guy. He's, he's like, like yeah. the whitest dude from Mine Hunters. And I didn't even, it took me, like, I just found this out, like, maybe, like, the last year or so. Like, I was like, what? But they, yeah. you could tell while you're watching it. You're like, this guy clearly doesn't look. It's the eyes. Yeah. His eyes are very distinct. It's yeah. like, oh, my God, it's that fucking guy. Yeah, but you're like, this guy clearly isn't Native American. And I'm just kind of like, you guys couldn't get, like, a maybe, like, an actual, like, Native American actor to, to play this person? They're like, no, nah, not only are we going to do that, we're going to double down and get, like, the whitest fucking guy we're ever. We're going to get the fucking whitest guy. We're going to put some fucking bronzer <laughs> on him. We're going to slap that bronzer on him. You know what I mean? Yeah. His fucking, like, yeah, he keeps going on about, like, his long fucking black hair. It's like, yeah, well, we know what's going to happen to this guy. He's yeah. Talk about how great his hair is as a fucking Indian. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, clearly, it's clearly a win. Um, <laughs> you know? But so, in any event... Um, you know, that one was always sad because it's like this town and it's kind of like, you know, off of reservation. It's like, it looks like, so everything looks fucking dry and dusty. Like you open your mouth and it's just like, mm -hmm. just bleh, like just dusty. And everything's like kind of terrible. And you have this old couple. It's the other dude from, uh, the other dude from the naked the other gun. Dude from the naked gun. Yes. Yes. They were giving him his play. And, um, they had that. George store. Kennedy. Oh, I think it's George. I think Kennedy. it's George Kennedy. Well, George Kennedy was also, um, he was the dad. He was the dad in the Father's Day thing, wasn't he? I don't know. I don't think so. I Maybe? think he was the dad in Father's Day. Let me let me see. Yeah. If only there was some way we could look. Oh. <laughs> we, we, uh, it's not on here, but you know what? We'll look it up. And that guy is Hal Holbro. Um, there you go. See? But I'll, I'm going to look it up. I but believe it. I'm yep. pretty sure that's the dad. And in any events, we're going to look it up before it's over. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, you know... They're like this old couple and they have like this, um, you know, cigar shop, like Indian out front. And the guy's like very respectful and he like talks to him and he's like, oh, chief, you know, he keeps his, his war paint, you know, fresh and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, these guys are a bunch of like, you know, small town assholes coming in and trying to rob the store. And Yeah. And like I said, it actually, so yeah. And there's the other like chief. There's an actual chief. Like, and that's like that his drive. nephew, right? Who's like the punk kid. Yes. Played yes. by the guy from Mindhunter. Yeah. Native American. So they did have an actual Native American actor, and then they had the white guy from from Mindhunter. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm like, okay. So you know, and he comes by and he owes them money, and like the guy's like, it's okay. Like you know, I know you can pay me whenever. He offers to give them like some sacred stuff from their village because their their little stores like kind of keeping them afloat, like helping mm -hmm. people with supplies, even though they know they don't have the money. So you could tell these people are like salt of the earth. They're good people. And the guy comes in with his like two friends, and they're like bunch of assholes and they basically try to rob the store and they end up killing that couple um and then they're like we're gonna make it like escape like we're getting out of here well that's not what's gonna happen spoiler alert spoiler uh, alert yeah so the chief woodenhead the uh the wooden carved um indian comes to life and he mm -hmm. basically doles out justice to everyone goes like full charles bronson yeah all these fucking dudes and yeah and my man uh it, it, my man ends up getting fucking scalped. Yeah, fucking he gets, ends. he does get scalped. And like the one dude who has like the, the car that they're like supposed to be like leaving town with. I'm like, your parents are like rich for that time in that area. I'm like, what's this fucking guy doing? Knocking over a convenience store? Yeah. I, I mean, I guess they were like lackeys to the one guy. Yeah, and like they were kind of lackeys. And he kind of made it feel like even like... Even off like that reservation, it was just kind of like a no happen in town. Like, yeah, you know, this guy's like you know kind of talking. I'm gonna go to Hollywood. I'm gonna make it big. I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of this one horse. Town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the town for losers. For I'm here. pulling out of here to win. There's nothing for me here, man. Told me back. I gotta go. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, it's definitely like a song. It's definitely a, like a town out of a fucking Bruce Springsteen song. Yes. The jobs all left. Yeah. Nobody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> working down at the mill um yeah so like you know that's that's a that's like one of the episodes it's it's pretty good um it's, like, I said, the, it's like we cool. said the cast the casting was not great but what are you gonna do that was well you know what like i said that was 1987 we're not we're not canceling creep show too it's what it was yeah yeah there's no can i'm not canceling anything um I, i'm like i'm not gonna i'm not, i don't want i don't want no smoke um but yeah, like so that was one of the episodes. Um, what else was there? It was that, it was the raft. We put we talked about the hitchhiker. Was there only four or three in Creep Show too? No. You know, it also has like the little bridges at the side story. They're actually done like through animation and it's all about like uh yeah, some 
even the animation, like the bully picking on the little kids, it seemed like a fucking grown ass man. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, what was neat about this one is like the interlude story that like kind of tied it all together was all animation, mm -hmm. which it was, was cool. very cool. And, um, you know, it was Billy. I think his name was Billy again, the kid. And um, he's looking through the magazine and, and whatnot. And I, he liked Venus flytrap. He thought that was so cool. So he like sends away for it. And I think he had already probably sent away for it as you learn at the end. And he's like getting more or whatever, but these bullies are like coming after him. And then they're like going through this frantic, like bike ride through town. Yeah. And that's kind of like throughout the whole thing. And then, um, at the end, like, you know, you think these bullies have him cornered, but they don't because of the man eating, the man eating via fly trap. Yes, and I always was like, another thing I thought would be more of a problem, Venus flytraps. Nope. With piranhas and things like that. I always thought yeah. those things were going to be more of an issue, but they're not. And I actually had a Venus flytrap a couple years ago. No shit, really? Yeah. They're just like weird little plants. They're neat. I mean, it wasn't like some large thing. It was like kind of small. It wasn't like an Audrey too. No. Be a lot cooler <laughs> if it was. It'd be but, a lot cooler yes. if it did. <laughs> yeah, but so that's like Creepshow 2. Um, what else? Um... Creepshow 3, I just recently watched it. I was shocked that they came out with another Creepshow movie. So Creepshow 3, I have not seen. It's bad. How many stories are in The it? special effects were bad. Yeah. Everything about it was bad. I think at one point I like walked out of the room to do something else. Like I didn't even, I was not even invested. I couldn't. Wow. There was like a couple stories. Um, I like, I, I don't even know. Like I, I've already like. I've already, like, blacked it I've out already, like, tried to, like, shuffle it out of my mind. I'm like, I need to make room for something else. Um, it was, like, a, like, a, there's, like, a time warp one um, where, like, this girl keeps going into different, like, it's, like, it keeps going to different universes or something, and it's, like, her family, then her family's, like, somebody else, and, like, okay. at the end, she's, like, weird, some weird grotesque monster. I don't know. It, it's weird. It was just, like, not good. There wasn't anything good about it. There's nothing redeeming about it at all. The acting was terrible. The stories were real bad. Um, I don't even think the creep was in it. Um, it just wasn't great. So it was like nothing to even like waste a moment of your time on. That's just the yeah, budget must weird. have been so low budget. Like I didn't even know they made that until like what a couple years ago. They like yeah, because I remember so. Me and you were talking, I was like, yeah, they made a Creepshow 3, and we were, like, trying to find it. Yeah, because I was like, oh, like, I you know, once again, I love anthology horror. I'll give it a shot. And mm -hmm. I did give it a shot, and it was, like, very terrible. But I'll then give, this... Yeah, I'll give any kind of horror movie a shot, unless, like you said, if someone like you is like, dude, don't waste your time, I'm like, I'm not. I'm and I, rare, I like, waste. rarely say that, too. Like, I'll, yeah. I rarely give something, like, such a, like, don't waste your time. A movie has to be really it's real, fucking egregious. It's real bad. Like, it's just not good. So, like, I, I mean, like I said. What was worse? If you want to watch it, go ahead. Yeah, but don't, say you, you but don't say you weren't warned. Yeah. What was worse, that or that remake of Children of the Corn we watched? Because that was really bad. I think the creep show was worse. Really? Wow. Yeah, worse man. than that. Ooh, that's that's saying something. Because I was like, man, the only thing that made like that time redeemable was like the fact we watched it together. Yeah, that we were all hanging out. But like, yeah. oof. But then yeah, it was rough. It was it was not good. Um, the creep show, the show that they have out on Shutter, which leads us to our next yeah. topic of discussion, is decent. Um, the first season started out really strong. Yeah, the first season's really good. Another uh, Grey Matter, another Stephen, oh, another, another legit Stephen King. That's a great story. And they did nice shift. Yeah, they did a really good job with that. Um, I thought the first season of the Creep Show, the show, was really good. I feel like the subsequent seasons, like the ones after, yeah, the they're hit or okay. Miss. Hit or miss. They're okay. I mean, I'd still watch them, obviously. Yeah, like the so season two was it season two where they do the thing with. Um, my man, uh, something long. Justin Long. Justin Long with the uh, with Terror Ex or Horror Express. Is that season two? You know, I can't even remember if that's season one or season two. That's a good one. That's a great episode. That's really good. And I remember I was like, I gotta watch this real movie because yeah. like I had never seen it. I was like, this is a good one. Great movie too. Yeah, that was good. Um, they had like a couple other ones that were good. Now I will say, in like one of the newer seasons, they did. Uh, it was like um, Sam Raimi, like yeah. And, like, I think Ted Raimi was in it, too, and it was, like, 
put the nod to the evil dead. Remember that? Oh, yeah, with my, um, the painter one. Yeah, that, it, it was, it was like the, they were on a show and like the whole evil dead thing. It was like evil dead. Yeah. It I was, thought. Like, Bob, it's basically evil dead meets Bob Ross. Yeah, it was it awesome. It was awesome. That was, that was cool. Like how they did that. That was kind of a big deal. Um, you know, and then they had other ones too. Like they had the one where they did like the lock, it was like the Loch Ness Monster kind of. And I'm like, all right, like this is like, okay, <laughs> like. But not bad, not bad. Not bad. Even so, so even the first one, like the first season, from what I remember, because I get season one and two. Yeah, because generally. that's like something that's relatively new, and yeah. we've only like watched it. Like I haven't watched it a million times, like the rest of these movies. I've only seen it like once or twice. Some of the uh, like the guest stars or the guests they had in like the episodes were like great. Like I think uh, what's it? Tobin Bell is in Grey Matter. My man, who's Saul. Yeah. Um, and Adrian Barbeau kind of throwing her in the episode. I think. Uh, I forget his name, but was it was it like Nazis? They were werewolves, or the one guy's a werewolf. That, yes, that was a great. That one. was a great episode. That's my man from uh, Reanimator. Yeah. And uh, and Castle Freak, which is a great movie. They always had like these kind of like really cool like Ted Raimi and the whole like shout out to Evil Dead. Like they always had like these like cool horror people like on the show. I like that because it's like a you know the horror like it's like a a community and they like draw on the same actors and they like bring them out and it's like what Greg Nicotero Greg Nicotero yeah he like you know did the show as like a showrunner for it or whatever Mm -hmm. it's it's a good show um I guess like the newer seasons are just kind of like all right but like it's still worth a watch like I would never be like this is terrible don't watch it like it's good it's it's decent not like I would for Creep Show 3 which I it's creepy is one of the episodes the guy in the suitcase who's like coughing? Oh up yeah, money? that was like I that just saw that one, one the other day, and it was like it was a decent one, and yeah. it, like some of them were kind of funny. Like it's that classic, like you know, like uh, Tales from the Crypt. It's like, kind of funny, but, but like there's like a horror element. There's like a there's like a, a moral yeah. story underneath of it all. Like a little you know? something for everybody. Yeah, I think that's what the why anthologies are like really cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Also, but, the thing about anthology is, like, let's say you watch, like, an anthology and there's, like, you know, four parts to it. One part might be trash, but the rest of them might be good. Like, it's, you know, like, you have um, an opportunity to redeem yourself. And it's not like I've wasted so much time, like, reading this book or watching this movie and, the, and it sucks at the end. It's like, well, you know, on to the next. Well, it's the same reason why me and you share a very, like, uh, we share a love for, like, books of short stories. It's yeah. It's not like the same thing. Yeah, the short story books are, like, some of my favorite. Like I said, like, Stephen King's Night Shift, like, probably my favorite short story book ever. Yeah. Um, Skeleton Crew is so good. (laughs) Um, You know, like, the Richard Matheson, um, the short stories, the collections he has. um, There's just, like, a lot that are, they're so good. And some of the stories from these, these books are, like... Like, they're being made into movies, and, like, they stick with you, too. Like, The Boogeyman... The from, Boogeyman, from Night yeah. Shift, it, I didn't, you know, I haven't seen the movie. I, I do see they're not going off of, like, what they're not going quite off from what I've seen. It, it's, like, not quite close to the book. But, like, that story Was to this great. day still creeps me out. And it's yeah. part of the reason I won't, like, let, like, you know, people, like, like shut the door. Like, my son's like a toddler. He can wonder. Like, I don't keep him locked in his room, like, at all. Because, like, I think about when you're a little kid and you're, like, afraid of, like, what's under the bed or what's in the closet or, you know, the unknown or the dark. That's, like, mm-hmm. the worst feeling, like, yeah. to be alone with. You're, like, being afraid. And, like, maybe I'm coddling him, but whatever. I just know what it's like to be a kid and be afraid. And, like, you think about stories like that, and it's, like, sure, it's supernatural. It's not real life. It's not based in real life, but still. Like, to them, and they're little, yeah. that can be very real. And so that's why I try to be, like, really, like, understanding about that kind of stuff. If you go upstairs right now, there is purposely just shit crammed under my bed. There's no way someone's going to be hiding in there without moving that stuff and me seeing it. Good luck. That's what I mean. Yeah. And I'm still like that. I'm still like that to this day. I think, I feel like that's like a factor like, um, because we have been heavily indoctrinated with like all the horror. Like we've been watching horror yeah. movies for so long. And, and serial killer stuff. Yeah, and- so <laughs> long. And like since, since we were young, like and like we, in, in a sense have become like desensitized to like some of the stuff you're like, eh. But like those fears, those like fears are still kind of there sometimes. Like, oh, yeah. like in the middle of the night, I'm like, what's that noise? And I'm not like, is it an intruder? I'm like, is this a spook, spirit, specter? What is it? Like, yeah. you know, it's like funny how like, you know, and in the middle of the night, everything seems like a million times worse. So, oh, like, God. you know, 
this place is super creepy. Yeah, 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 of course. Of course it is. Um, <laughs> but, like, yeah, it's just funny. Like, you just spend your life, like, consuming so much horror, and then it does. It stays with you. It's, like, mm-hmm. lasting. Like, in my house, the shower curtain's always open. I always check the closet before I go to bed, but you can't fucking put anything under my bed. I have this... My attic is completely filled, so you cannot get in it to hide. Because I had, like, one of those cubbyhole doors in my bedroom. Yeah. It's like, oh, man. Yeah, but you're also, like, a survivalist, too. Like, you know, back in, like, in the days <laughs> when we were, like, hiding out, like, in parks. Like, and then you're like, look, we can we can take off. We can get in this sewer grade over here. Like, you're always looking for an escape anyway. I'm always looking for an I'm always looking for an exit. You yeah. are. Always looking for an exit. Yeah. yeah, and so that, I feel like that'll help you with, like, the supernatural. But also with, like, you know, if there was, like, a home invader situation. I don't know. I'm getting, uh, I'm slipping in my old age. I'm, I'm over here saying, yeah, I'll go camping. All these things, I was like, you no, know, I would live in these horror movies. I would be doing these stupid things. Now the, I'm like, the camping, the camping thing to me, really threw me off. I was like, who is this pod person? I'm like, this dude is always like, I would never go camping. Never would I ever. And you're like, yeah, I'd go camping. Oh, I'm like rethinking it now. I'm like, who is this guy? I'm like, what do you mean? I, I, all I've been hearing for like, I don't know, forever is how you would never go camping, and now you're like, I'll go camping. I, I, what? I'm, I think I'm rethinking that now. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm back to my old ways. I'm like, nah, I don't know. Here's me. I'll camp in my backyard or something. I don't know. Even camping in my backyard sounds fucking scary. It's like, we have aliens that are real now. <laughs> yeah, right? We're just glossing over that. What are they trying to distract you from? That aliens exist? It's we camp out in the backyard? No. It's in the wild, wild west out there. Motherfuckers just wander in. They're not even saying that they're, they're not even keeping up a secret now. Yeah. It's like, I got a house. So, like, why would I not just sleep in my house? Well... Any final thoughts on Creepshow? Time all back to Creepshow. And now we've come full circle. And I that's it. My thoughts on Creepshow, um, you know, from the 80s, everyone's favorite era, if you were born there, like myself. I think so. I definitely think the 80s what is a, the best what era. What a time to be alive. And Creepshow 1, Creepshow 2, not Creepshow 3. They hold up. They're entertaining. They're fun. They're little short bursts of horror that you can enjoy. Um, You know, you might learn some life lessons. You might learn to, the moral code, be a good person or something, some gruesome creative death is going to happen to you. I don't know. Yeah. But they're worth a watch. And the Creep Show show on Shudder, you know, if you got the time, give it a whirl. I definitely recommend it. I recommend all these things. Like I said, I'm not going to recommend Creep Show 3. I'll probably never watch it now. God, no. Doesn't sound like I'm missing much. No, but like any, you know, Anthology Horror, it's where it's at. Tales from the Dark Side. Anthology Horror is where it's at. Big fan. Do yourself a favor. Watch a Twilight Zone. Man, we got to do a whole episode on a Twilight Zone. We must. Because, man, that's... You want to talk about some serious... You want to talk about uh, social commentary before that was a thing and that was cool. Yeah. That was hip. Yeah. And no one's been able to do it better. Way, way ahead of its time. So, a great show. Rob you know what? Like, scrap this whole episode. Let's talk about the Twilight Zone. <laughs> How much time you got? How much you time sure you can. Got? Yeah. <sighs> but that's it. That's my thoughts. Like, Creep Show, it's it's good. It's it's entertaining. And if you're into it, obviously there's loads of other things you could watch um, that are they're as good. Nah, definitely, like I said, don't listen to the don't listen to the critics. Creep Show 2 is still worth watching. Yeah. Um generation thing but i kind of you know i tend to lean towards creepshow too more than creepshow one but creepshow one i mean george romero some of his best stuff yeah yeah check it out yeah and we will leave it at that for this episode of the marvel of horror i want to thank my dearest friend my best friend my sister nicole DiBiase, for yes. coming by giving her thoughts on all kinds of things and her great advice <laughs> <laughs> We can fix this in editing, too. Probably we can fix this in editing. We'll mix a lot of this stuff We lack a lot of, like, philosophical here. People are going to be like, I thought we were talking about creep show. What are they talking about? Raising kids? What's happening here? Hey, we talk about all things that pertain to horror, and nothing's more scary than raising kids. Agreed. So, there you go. In your face. Yeah. Faced. All things horror, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Catch other episodes and catch us on Spotify. Catch us at the Marvel of Horror podcast on YouTube. Leave your comments. You know, Do shout yourself out some a stuff. favor. Do yourself a favor. Leave the comments. Subscribe. Tell us what you think. If you're from the Delaware area, come be a guest on the show. DSAB, talking to you. Oh. Halloween 4, where are you at? And we will see you next time. Thank you again. Thank you. 
I said good day. I said good day, sir. <laughs>